Exactly where I'm supposed to be. It's right where I'm supposed to be. It's right where I'm supposed to be. Right here. Good morning, WMBC. Welcome here this morning. Wonderful to hear the chitter chatter of people who maybe haven't seen each other for a while. And it's great. Everybody's excited. It's a nice, uh, beautiful weekend we're having already. And uh, finally, I should say, not already. Why don't you stand with us? Let's, uh, let's sing together. Welcome to those who are tuning in online. Just uh, find a spot in your house to uh, worship freely along with us as well.
Got another song for you guys. Um, it's new to the congregation, probably not new to a lot of you, but encourage you if you don't know it, just uh, just listen and worship uh, just by reading the words and and um, yeah, just uh, knowing the truth behind them and and uh, <laughs> letting that letting the words make a connection with your heart. Um, yeah, if you know it, sing loud. I love it. I, I, I can hear you guys. I got stuff in my ears and I can still hear you over that, so I love it. Just keep singing loud. It's a great morning. We've saved us. We just praise you. We've run out of that tomb 
into a new day, into a glorious day. We praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's invite Mike up, guys. Let's invite Mike. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Hey. Oh, good warm welcome to everyone. As Kurt was saying, good to see all of you guys here on this warm and bright and sunny, sunny June day. Uh, uh, good to have you guys tuning in online. Man, thanks for bringing it this morning, worship team. I love getting together just to worship together with you guys. And kids, it has been a blast to worship together with you guys. Uh, you guys, though, if you got kids, right, ages 3 to grade 6, you guys can bring them out uh, to kids groups. There's going to be leaders waiting in the foyer. Parents, if you want to go with your kids, uh, we'll leave that decision up to you. Feel free to do so. Um, and I'm going to continue on uh, with a couple of announcements just as parents uh, head out with their kids this morning. Um, if you see Chad and Lisa Peters here, they're in their yellow, yellow shirts. Uh, so if you're new here or guest uh, and you're not sure kind of where to go, what to do, uh, who to connect, uh, those would be some great people to, for you to connect uh, with this morning. They're going to point you in the right direction. So if you've got questions, uh, look for the bright yellow shirts. They'll be able uh, to help you out. A uh, couple of announcements that I want to make you guys aware of just as we continue uh, on this morning. Uh, we are having a book sale. Uh, it's going to run today, this morning, and next Sunday. So if you're interested about checking out some books, uh, we've got some for sale. Uh, you can just head to the, to the library and that's where, that's where you're going to find those. A couple of events coming up. Uh, our community cleanup night is taking place uh, this coming Monday. And we're going to meet at the church at 7.30, and we've been kind of given a, a section in an area of the city just to help clean up garbage and alongside ditches and sidewalks, and right, just coming alongside our, our series of talking about being a good neighbor, this is a really good way for us as a church, right, to come together and to be a good neighbor to our community. And actually, our junior highs uh, have committed to help uh, clean up the, the city, and so they're going to they're gonna do this as part of their night. So we're going to be joining them, and be great to have everyone uh, all together. Together, helping make our city look beautiful. So that's tomorrow at 7.30. Uh, church picnic is also coming up. So this is going to take place a little later on June 19th. So a couple Sundays from now. It's going to be really fun, right? This is a, a fun day just to get together, to connect. Uh, we're going to have a, a worship service starting at 10 a.m. And that's going to be right at the main field. So right when you drive into camp, you can't miss it. It's going to be right there. We're also going to have uh, games for all ages after the service is done. We're going to have a barbecue lunch together, potluck dessert. So whatever you want to bring for that is going to be great. Um, yeah, there's also going to be a few camp activities that we're going to get an opportunity to use as well that morning. So great day. encourage you to come out to that uh, Sunday, June 19th. And that day is also Father's Day. So if you've been with us over the last couple Sundays, right, we want to be uh, honoring and celebrating our dads. So if there's a dad uh, that you want to nominate here um, and celebrate and highlight, um, or if it's your own dad, or if it's a father figure in your life, if you want to send me a story of a time that person in your life taught you something, we would love to hear it. Uh, so you can send those stories and a picture to, to me, uh, mike at winklermb.com, and then we're going to choose one winner uh, on the church picnic, and we're going to that winner, and there's going to be a prize pack given away. One of the prize pack items is a, is a dad's joke book. So I mean, come on, the classic dad's joke book. We're going to be giving one of, the way, uh, one of way, those away along with Charlie B gift cards, so uh, good prizes to be won there if you want to participate in that. Uh, also coming up on the calendar is, on June 26 is our annual meeting. Uh, this is going to take place at 7 p.m. in the gym. And this is just an opportunity for us to gather together as the, as the church and just really have your say in the upcoming ministry year. So you're going to hear updates uh, from the board, discernment team, Pastor Luke's going to be sharing. Uh, and members, you're going to vote on the proposed budget that we've got coming up for this year. Um, and you're also going to have an opportunity to uh, uh, read, if you'd like, uh, an update that staff have been put together in their specific ministry area of what's been going on uh, this past year. And so we're going to get those out to you digitally uh, next Sunday. We'll also have some copies, hard copies for you available at the Welcome Center if you want to check those out uh, next Sunday. So looking forward to seeing you guys there. Annual meeting, June 26, 7 p.m. in the gym. 
Okay, uh, you know, just before uh, Pastor Luke comes up, uh, I just want to take uh, a moment just to share something uh, in the Word with us. And I want to take a moment just to encourage you and just to invite you to um, give financially uh, to the Lord this morning. I know, I know there's just so many, um, so many options and so many treasures, right, that we can seek after, that we can, we can spend our time, um, you know, looking for. Uh, in our world, but really there are only two kinds of treasures in our world, those that are temporary and those that are eternal. And each day, right, not, not just in our finances, but also in our hearts and our lives, we make decisions about which of the two treasures we're going to spend time uh, living for. And, and Jesus tells us these words in Matthew chapter 13, verse 44. He tells a parable and he says, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that a man discovered hidden in a field. In his excitement, he hid it again and sold everything he owned to get enough money to buy the field. And Jesus, he's worth giving everything for, not just our finances, but just our whole hearts, our whole lives, the way we spend our time, the way we love others, the way we connect and serve others. Jesus is worth selling everything for. And so if you want to give uh, financially, um, you can do that. Just take a look at our website. There's lots of different ways that you can give. Another opportunity for us to give, uh, I shared a number of Sundays uh, ago that there's an opportunity to give to a Ukrainian family uh, who had just recently moved here and we were asking for some bikes and a toolkit. And those needs have been met and provided by you guys. So a huge thank you on behalf of that family to you guys. Um, I know they are a family of eight. Uh, currently, right now, they just have a fridge. So they are also looking for a freezer. Uh, so that's an Another opportunity, if you want to uh, help contribute in that way, you can just connect with Bev Weeb at Central Station and she'll be able to uh, help you out with that. So I want to make mention of that opportunity as well. Uh, One last update, uh, just in family news uh, this past week. Um, I want to let us know that, and maybe you've heard the news that, uh, yeah, a longtime uh, friend of ours here, right, that goes to church, Doreen Penner, uh, passed away this week. Uh, She was a wife to Wayne and a mom to Donnelly and Steve. And so we just want to give our condolences to them and the rest of the family this morning. And we also celebrate too, knowing that Doreen is with Jesus. And uh, even though we're going to miss her here, uh, we celebrate that fact. So I want to take some time, just pray for the morning, pray for the family. And then Pastor Luke's going to come up and share. Let's pray. God, I just thank you um, that you are with us uh, in every season of life. Uh, Father, and I just think of, of Wayne and, and Steve and Donnelly and just the rest of the family. God, would you bring uh, comfort and peace to them? Would you bring your presence, your power to them um, and walk, walk alongside with them uh, in this next season? God, we just so bless them as a family and pray your, your comfort and your peace over them. And, and as Luke comes up and, and shares from the word this morning, God, would you, would you open our hearts to hear what you have to say in your word and what you have to say through Luke? God, we just open our hearts, we open our souls to you this morning. Would you come and, come and teach us a new thing this morning? In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, just before I get going, uh, don't forget, send in your questions. I want to know what you're thinking about while I'm talking and while we're reading scripture together. Uh, I'll do my best to uh, respond. I can't promise any answers, but I will do my best. So <clears throat> there you go. Ooh, that was a terryism. Look at that. There you go. Gone but not forgotten. Okay. Uh, two weeks ago, I was up here and I asked you uh, if you could think of like the, the best meal that you ever had. This week, I have a different question. Uh, actually, these, those two, two weeks ago and this one, uh, these messages are going to be kind of a, a package deal. So if you have any memory of the last one, just bring that forward and you'll be good to go for today. Uh, but I have a different question, and that is, what is the best party you've ever been to? I found this way more difficult to answer, uh, partially because I was never much of a partier. I was a, don't laugh, Conrad. (laughs) That's not nice. (laughs) Wow. 
I mean, he's right. <laughs> I was pretty comfortably in the huge nerd category. Uh, so my parties uh, with my friends like, involved things like video games, board games, uh, oh, nerdy card games like Yu-Gi-Oh, Magic the Gathering. Oh, yeah. We actually invented our own like, mock card game. Like We made the cards, we made the rules. Uh, yeah, not invited to a lot of parties, this guy. <laughs> That's true. Uh, now, I'm guessing that as I, I brought that up, I asked that question, some of you thought of parties that might not be something you'd want to share on Monday morning. Maybe it was the wrong kind of party. Maybe it was with the wrong kinds of people. It's not that you necessarily committed some great sin or something like that, but just that's not a safe story to share. If you shared that in a church, you'd, you'd probably feel judged, right? And that's actually what we're going to talk about today. Uh, what kind of parties do you go to? What kind of parties do you not go to? What kind of parties do you throw? Who do you invite? Uh, how we answer these questions has an impact on whether or not we are neighbors to the people around us, and maybe not in the way that we might first think or assume. And to illustrate this, we look no further than the life of Jesus. And in particular, we're going we're gonna to look at a story of two parties. Uh, one is the right kind of party, and one is the wrong kind of party. The first party takes place in the house of a leader of the Pharisees, and it happens to be on the Sabbath. Now, some context. The Sabbath uh, was the time of the week that the Jews stopped working and they rested. And it's still true today for devout Jews. Now, of course, we're familiar with something like that. We have a weekend, but for the Jews, this is not just a weekend. It's not just a rest. The purpose of the rest, like there's actually a, a theological meaning here. It's supposed to be formative for who they are as a people because this rest, the Sabbath rest, was a symbol of the day that God rested after he created the world. So when the Jews celebrated Sabbath, they looked back and they remembered that all time is God's and that they could take a day away from providing for themselves because God was totally capable of providing for them, even if they weren't at work. And so they celebrated the fact that they could rest like God did because he was watching out for them. But more than just looking back and remembering, uh, the Sabbath was also an opportunity to look forwards because the Jews believed that one day the Messiah would come, he would bring the kingdom of God, and then all of God's people would enjoy rest in God's creation. So this Sabbath, and the meal that you would celebrate on the Sabbath is a way to look back and remember. It's also a way to anticipate the rest in the age to come. And with that in mind, Let's open our Bibles to Luke chapter 14. So like I said, Jesus, he's at a, uh, the house of a leader of the Pharisees for the Sabbath meal. And this is a fancy party, okay? There are dessert spoons and salad forks, you know, and like all the utensils are there. And like, I don't know, like there's six things here. I don't know what these are all for. The guests are a, a who's who of upstanding Jews. People that are, they're definitely going to be in the the, the Sabbath meal in, in God's uh, new creation, his kingdom to come. The party itself is made to represent what the banquet in the kingdom of God is going to look like, at least according to the way the Pharisees understand that it's going to look. But Jesus sees things differently. He notices everyone jockeying for position. So at this party, and, and parties in the ancient world were very much like this, and some of our parties today are still similar, you'd have this place of honor, right? You'd have the, the most honorable person at the party gets to sit there, and then everyone, like it's, it's descending, it's social rank, right? You can go into a party and get a sense of like how everyone is treated and, and understands their place in society because of where they're sitting. And Jesus notices that people are like, they're, they're sitting in where they should, but they're kind of like, well, maybe I get a seat up. Maybe I get two seats up, right? It's, it's a power play. It's all about status. It's a popularity contest. And then some poor guy. Some poor guy uh, looks around and he says, blessed are those who eat bread in the kingdom of God. Like, look, at oh, this is it. Look at this, this is fantastic. Sucker. 
Because now, everyone gets to meet awkward party guest Jesus. We all think, oh, wouldn't it be great to hang out with Jesus? I think it would, but there would be moments where it's just like, oh, man, I can't believe I brought Jesus to this thing. Because he's about to tell them that their party sucks. So let's uh, read Luke chapter 14, verse 16. So Jesus replied, this guy says that, blessed are those who are going to eat bread in the kingdom of God. And Jesus replied to his story. He says, a man prepared a great feast and sent out many invitations. When the banquet was ready, he sent his servants out to tell the guests, come, the banquet is ready. But they all began making excuses. One said, I've just bought a field. I must inspect it. Please excuse me. Another said, I've just bought five pairs of oxen. That's a lot, by the way. This guy has five times as much property as the average person. I, I want to try them out, so please excuse me. Another said, I just got married, so I, I can't come. The servant returned, told his master what they had said. His master was furious, and he said, go quickly into the streets, the alleys of the town, and invite all the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. After the servant had done this, he reported, there's still room for more. So his master said, okay, go out into the country lanes and behind the hedges and urge anyone you find to come so that the house will be full. For none of those I first invited will get even the smallest taste of my banquet. Okay, I want to draw our attention to a few things here. First of all, parties can be status symbols. And that's not just true of what happened in Jesus' time. It's true today. Right? I, I, you got into the concert. You went to the premiere. You went to the, the open house, the grand opening. But even more of a status symbol, it, parties are status symbols, but it's even more of a status symbol if you, you get an invitation. Right? This, is not a, this isn't open to anybody. This is open to just like, the people who get the ask. I think, I think a few weeks ago or something, the Met Gala happened. Right? So like, only, a few, like, only a set happened. Right? So like only, a few, like only a set number of people get to go to that thing or the Oscars. Or, you know, think about the, the biggest party of the year. I don't know what it is. But not anyone can just go. So getting an invitation, well, that's a status symbol. And it's not just the invitation either. Whether or not the right people attend your party or anybody attends your party, that is a status symbol for the host, right? Imagine if you threw a party, you invited a bunch of people and nobody showed up. Yikes. Like that, that says something about you, doesn't it? It says that you're not important enough for the people you invited to take time out of, like whatever they could be doing, you're not better than whatever that is. You're not important enough for them. And that is definitely what's happening in this parable. Each of the excuses that are given, whether it's the, uh, I've bought new property, uh, I have new oxen, I've got like all the things, all the reasons that people uh, wouldn't be able to, to go are status symbols. Who you married, that was a status thing. You, mar- like you tried to get in with the right family, right? It's, it's all, well, I've got something more important to do. So the man preparing the feast is shamed by his guests. He's not worth their time. They've got other things on their minds. And now look at the people who who actually do attend this banquet. First, it's the poor, the crippled, the blind. These are the the lowest rank on the social ladder in Jesus' day. They have no financial capital. They have no social capital, right? They can't make anything happen. They can't get anything. And even just associating with people like that means that, oh, well, you must be further down the ladder than we thought you were. And then after that, after Jesus invites the people who have no social standing, or the, sorry, the, the, the man who, who, um, who throws the party, he tells his, his servants to just invite anybody. So now social rank is thrown right out the window. Now it's just whoever can come, whoever wants to accept the invitation, just we need warm bodies to just fill this room. Jesus tells this parable to challenge his listeners' assumptions about who is truly worthy of honor. Like, think about it. Not the, not the parable, but the party Jesus is at. Here in their midst is the king of the universe, God himself. One would think that you would drop everything to spend time with him. 
But instead, the Pharisees, the teachers of the law, the scribes, all of those people, they treat Jesus like he's a social outcast because he is a social outcast. They dishonor him. And not only are they wrong about Jesus, but their understanding of social status is also wrong. The people they would never associate with are the people that God wants to honor at his banquet. And beyond that, our social structures and ladders, they mean nothing to him. He looks beyond the spectrum and welcomes everyone to join us. That's the kind of kingdom that God has. It's what his kingdom looks like. It does not look like, like the guy said, right? Well, look at this kingdom. The kingdom of God doesn't look like a room full of wealthy men. The kingdom of God is an extravagant banquet, but it's served to the people who can't afford to be there and to anyone who would accept the invitation. The second party looks very different. It's in the book of Matthew. If you've got a Bible, you can head over to Matthew chapter 9, verse 9. Uh, this is a house party at Matthew's house, the Matthew whose, uh, whose gospel we're reading. And it goes like this, starting in verse 9. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at his tax collector's booth. Follow me and be my disciple, Jesus said to him. So Matthew got up and followed him. That's always fascinated me. Who among us? Someone's like, hey, you want a job? There's no pay. Uh, You have to leave everything behind. Also, uh, you don't know what you're doing yet. Do you go? You don't. Amazing. Later, Matthew invited Jesus and his disciples to his home as dinner guests, along with many tax collectors and other disreputable sinners. But when the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with such scum? When Jesus heard this, he said, healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. Then he added, now go and learn the meaning of this scripture. I want you to show mercy and not sacrifices. For I've come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners. A few weeks ago, uh, that that message, I said that Jesus went around uh, announcing the kingdom of God and showing people what it uh, was like. And here, at this party, at the wrong kind of party, Jesus shows the Pharisees that he doesn't just show them what the kingdom of God is like, he shows them who the kingdom of God is for. It's for the poor, the broken, the ones that the world leaves behind. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And the Pharisees find this really hard to stomach. Because the Pharisees are the people who, like, their job is obeying all the rules. Their job is not just for them, but trying to get Israel to obey the law. They had this belief, I think uh, we've shared this before, that, that the Israelites believed that if all Jews, if all of God's people obeyed the law, even just for one day, like one solid 24-hour period, the Messiah would come and the kingdom of God would be here. All that had to be done was if everyone would just get on board with the law. And here comes Jesus, claiming to be the Messiah, bringing the kingdom to anyone, willy-nilly, just People who don't even obey the law. They don't deserve the kingdom, according to the Pharisees. And it infuriates them. There's actually a third party, another party in scripture that brings this into really sharp focus. It's in uh, the, the book of Luke in chapter 15. It's not a party Jesus goes to. It's another parable. It's the parable of the prodigal son. And I'm sure you know, this is familiar to many of you. Uh, there's a father who has two sons. One of them asks for his portion of the inheritance early before his parents have passed away. And then he takes off uh, and he blows it on wild living. And I'm sure we can imagine what that entails. And once he blows through all of his inheritance, at the same time as he runs out of money, there's a famine in the land. So not, not only is he poor, but he can't eat anything. And so he's starving to death. So he gets a, a job at a farm, uh, and even that, it's, it's a starvation wage. He can't, like, it, he's still hungry every day. And so he, he finally decides to go home because he remembers that, he, he remembers the way his father treats his workers on the farm. They, ha- they always have food to eat. And so he decides to go home. And here's where we pick up the story in Luke chapter 15, verse 20. 
So he returned home to his father, and while he was a long way off still, his father saw him coming. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you. I'm no longer worthy of being called your son. His dad's not even listening. He says, uh, quick, bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Get a ring on his finger, sandals for his feet. Kill the fatted calf. We must celebrate with a feast. For this son of mine was dead, and now he's returned to life. He was lost, but now he's found. And so the party began. Now here's where things get interesting. Meanwhile, the older son was in the fields working. When he returned home, he heard music and dancing in the house. And he asked one of the servants, what's going on? Your brother's back, he was told. And your father has killed the fattened calf. We are celebrating because of his safe return. The older brother was angry and wouldn't go in. His father came out and begged him. But he replied, all these years... I've slaved for you and never once refused to do a single thing that you told me to do. And in all that time, you never gave me even one young goat for a feast with my friends. Yet when this son of yours comes back after squandering your money on prostitutes, you celebrate by killing the fattened calf? His father said to him, Look, dear son, you've always stayed by me and everything I have is yours. We had to celebrate this happy day for your brother was dead and has come back to life. He was lost, but now he's found. In the older brother, Jesus paints a perfect portrait of the Pharisees, furious that undeserving people are being offered grace and they're being celebrated but that's the kind of king we serve. That's the kind of kingdom he rules. This is why he throws parties because people who are far from him have come close to him. So here's where we're at. Jesus goes to the right party and he says it sucks. He goes to the wrong party and when he is informed that it is the wrong party, he tells those people to just go read their Bibles a bit better. So Jesus' version of what the wrong party is, is different than we might expect. And the main issue, the big difference between a good party and a bad party is who is invited and whose values system is in place, right? Who does this party actually go about celebrating and honoring? And that's where all of this ties into being a good neighbor. When we throw good parties... And we invite the people who, for one reason or another, don't belong there, don't deserve to be there. We are being excellent neighbors to them. And we're we're welcoming them to experience the kingdom of God. A kingdom that no one deserves, but God offers to everyone anyway. So I want to leave us with three steps to partying like Jesus and being good neighbors. This isn't an exhaustive list. It's just some things we can kind of get rolling with. So the first step is just to party. Yeah, I don't, don't moan. Don't complain. This is, right, is this hard? Is this a, a tough thing to ask? I don't think so. Make partying a thing that you do. It can be for important dates. It can be for milestones, achievements. It can be totally made up, like just find a reason to party. Your neighbor's dog has a graduation. I don't know. Whatever it is, just find, like it can be for nothing. It can be for something, but it doesn't have to be. Actually, uh, if you need reasons, I'm pointing at you, Kayla. Talk to Kayla Suko. She parties all the time. Uh, I've heard wonderful things about your parties. Still waiting on an invite, though. (laughs) What's that about? No, it's fine. Uh, No, like, Find reasons to party. Make it a part of your life. Find reasons to celebrate. Bring people the joy of the Lord. The second step, ooh, second step. Never mind, grade school. Some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. And I'm, for those of you who don't, you're very happy people. Uh, the second one is to invite some of the wrong people to your parties. Invite someone who, maybe they think twice about coming into church, into this building on a Sunday morning. 
And it could be because of their past. It could be because of their habits. It could be because of their beliefs. Whatever the reason, this just isn't a space that feels safe for them. So welcome them to join a different space, but a space that is still filled with God's hospitality, his warmth, and his love. Invite someone that the world overlooks, right? We're not so different from, from Jesus' time in the way that people treat other people that are different from them. I think uh, the poor, the crippled, people who've made the wrong choices, the wrong mistakes, those are still people that we keep on the outside. That really hasn't changed that much. So they're the wrong people. Invite them to your party. And when you invite them to your party, celebrate them. I heard a story uh, probably in the winter, on the radio, uh, about a woman who was turning 80 years old during one of the lockdown periods of the pandemic. She had five kids. They had plans to all fly out and, and celebrate with her, uh, but of course they couldn't. Uh, it just wasn't going to happen. And so she was anticipating that her 80th birthday, this incredible milestone, was going to be celebrated at home alone until one of her neighbors found out. And this person just rounded up the whole neighborhood and they decided that they were going to throw a, a traveling birthday party for this elderly woman. Uh, and so they, they started at 4 a.m. They snuck over to her house and put 80 pinwheels on the front of her lawn. And then in the morning, these things are just flashing around and like the light coming through her windows and she doesn't know what's going on. She goes out and uh, someone is there letting her know, it's your birthday We've got, like, just you take some time. Don't worry about it. We'll be back. And then, over the course of the day, they set up eight stations around the neighborhood where she would be celebrated in different ways. One of them, one of her neighbors sang to her and gave her sangria. Uh, her Iranian neighbors set up a tea party for her and celebrated that way. Uh, there was Hawaiian dancing. There was a, a rapid fire interview where they asked her 80 questions in the space of 10 minutes. And she had to, like, answer, I... That seems cruel, uh, but I, hearing, they, they recorded it and hearing like her response, it sounded like she was having a blast. And at the end, everyone gave her a cake and they sang happy birthday to her. So her 80th birthday went from being one of the worst ones in her memory to, I mean, it has to be one of the best. Find ways to celebrate the wrong people. I mean, an, an elderly person isn't necessarily the wrong person, like a wrong kind of person, but think about our world. Do we celebrate the elderly? We really don't. Youth, youth is what's fancy nowadays. But find ways to celebrate the wrong people. And don't let it all be about milestones or achievements. The reason people are valuable in the kingdom of God is not because of what they have done, but because they belong to God. That's it. There's nothing to do with achievements. It's just that we are his. That's why we matter. That's why everyone matters. So let them know that you see them, that you care about them. They're, they're worth celebrating regardless of who they are or what they've done. They're precious children of God, worthy of celebration. Mike, any questions? Don't forget to check the junk mail folder, Mike. We always, that's going to be a thing. Oh, by the way, yeah. Are you noticing this? What's up? Gray shoes, dark pants, kind of, yeah. I mean, I've got this thing on, but. Yeah, close-ish. Hey, there Great we go. minds. Yeah. <laughs> we'll take it. Uh, Luke, okay, we've got uh, one question so far. I haven't checked that junk mail. Mm -hmm. um, it says, are there some parties that followers of Jesus shouldn't go to? Huh. Yep. <laughs> I, yeah, <laughs> I think so. Um, oh. Okay. So Jesus, I was going to say, Jesus is a mature Christian. <laughs> He's more than that, isn't he? Um, but so when Jesus goes to a party, he does not move in the direction a party could go, right? Like if, if, the, if there's the potential for something sinful to happen at a party, Jesus doesn't go in that direction. Instead, the party moves in Jesus's direction. Uh, we can do that too, but it requires... Uh, maturity, right? So I think the answer, like, are there parties people shouldn't go to? Yeah. Uh, and it probably, it probably looks different for each person, 
right? So if you're going to go to a party where you're going to be tempted to do something that like isn't, you know, like there's going to be something there that, that I know that this is going to be happening. I know that ee, like if I go, I'm probably going to, you know, I might give in. Then maybe it's a good idea not to, right? But even then, I mean, if you're a follower of Jesus, you've got a lot of things at your disposal. You've got the church around you. So if you're not sure, like, hey, should I actually go to this celebration? Talk to uh, a fellow Christian. Ask them to give you wisdom and insight. Not only that, but you have the Holy Spirit. You, get, you have God living inside of you. So ask. Ask whether or not this is a good idea. And if you decide to go, pray that, that the Spirit would guide and direct what you do. So that when you go to this celebration, you behave like Jesus uh, when you're there. That's, I think that's, that's, a, that's, that's it. That's good. Yeah, that's good, Luke. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then this one's probably on that same, same wave, wavelength as what you just shared. Um, what if someone wants you to party with them about their coming out party? Ooh. I know, that was a big one. So that's a good question. You know that whole right talk, just prayer, right? That we, you just talked about how yeah. you would navigate that. So, <laughs> okay, I'm going to share with you where I'm at on that. This does not mean this is the answer. Okay, there's lots of different like answers, and I think this is this is a it's a hot topic. There's lots of good answers that take different positions. Uh, where I'm at is uh, I can celebrate someone even if they see themselves differently than I see them or the way I think God sees them, okay? So I don't have to enforce my view of who someone ought to be to spend time with them. I can let God worry about whatever someone's going through. And he, I mean, he does that for me. There are areas in my life that I'm not totally aligned with God. So if, if, I can, if people can hang out with me and not worry about it, if we think and see ourselves differently, then I can celebrate somebody else even if they see themselves in a different way than God might. So I hope that makes sense. And if you disagree with me, let's have a conversation. Mm-hmm. I'm good. totally good with that. Great. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Luke. Thanks, Appreciate Mike. it. Okay. Uh, let's pray. And then I, I think we're actually going to sing that, that new song again. Because it's a ripper. So uh, let's do that one more time. Let's pray. God, we have so much to celebrate. You love us. You saved us. You defeated death. You've given us your own life, your own spirit. You made a way for us to be with you forever. You've given us a value and a purpose. I pray that you would make us people who celebrate often and who welcome the wrong people to join us. And Father, would you use us to show them the joy their Father in heaven will have when they come home and experience the celebration you have waiting for them. Amen. Awesome, why don't you stand with us? We're gonna sing. One thing about good parties is they're usually loud. They're usually, uh, there's usually some noise. And so let's sing loudly. Let's, there's a part in this song that says, I ran out of that grave. That's where, we, that's where we just yell it out. We can sing it out, yell it out, whatever. Even if you're not musical, you can just, that's a part, that's, that part's for you guys. The non-singers, the, that, that part's for you. Just yell it out. Um, because we, we can run from this tomb um, of, of shame and, and uh, this weight that we're carrying, burdens and things. Those are our tomb. And the song says, uh, you know, like the shame, the weight, uh, all these things are my tomb. And I ran out of that grave. I ran out of that tomb. So we have a reason to sing this morning, guys. Let's sing and let's party. And uh, then you guys can do whatever you do today. Hopefully it's party. buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was my turn 
till I met you. I was breathing, but not alive. And all my failures, I tried to hide. It was Thanks for joining us online. Uh, parents, if you have kids, oh boy, I'm going to forget, up until the age of three, Dinah, look at me and telling me if that's correct, up till the age of three, uh, you can go get your kids right away. If not, uh, 11.15, you'll be able to go and get your kids. Uh, don't forget, we've got coffee, we've got snacks, stick around. Uh, we'd love to, to just chat and, and build community here after the service. Anyway, have a good Sunday. God bless. I see you in the skies with purple hue I hear you in the choir